Welcome to Demystifying Gay Porn. My name is Ike Grande, and if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. And slowly and surely, so has the guest that has started with me, because he went from styling to eventually modeling to uh, porn, to being in yeah. front of the camera. Model, content creator, porn star, writer, and stylist. Yeah. A little Jordan jack James. of all trades. Yeah. Jordan Jameson, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm very well. I'm glad we finally got to do this. Yes. Yeah. It's been a minute. I've been wanting to like talk to you for a bit. Ever since I started working with you, mm-hmm. a lot of times what I like doing is having uh, models on that have, like, you know, you can tell a lot with eyes. You can tell somebody has a story. Yeah. And I mean, I, I just said it off off camera, but... I feel like we should do it now. <laughs> okay. Because, okay. um, rip the band aid off. Yeah, yeah. Well, when I started working with Treasure Island, there was this one infamous solo scene. Uh huh. And <laughs> you were going by the name of Minotaur at the yeah. time. Yeah. Rest so, in peace. So Minotaur came in from what I, from what I gather, allegedly, right? He came in before he shot, put on an afro, <laughs> gloves. <laughs> glasses yeah and then proceeded to jerk off and a beard and a fake beard and don't fake forget beard. the beard so yeah. so explain that to me <laughs> um so at the time i wasn't super comfortable with doing porn mm-hmm. and i figured okay i can like have my normal person disguise and that was that so yeah an afro beard and also i don't know like for me it was like kind of a parody on what it is to be a normal masculine gay man um so just mixing all that together um obviously did not last long Um, retro though retro also a retro (laughs) vibe to it i love anything retro like i don't know today obviously i'm kind of going for like this like 30s vibe i love it thank you um but yeah i like anything retro so i guess i was like all right i'm gonna like embody a 70s porn Mm. star and you guys really leaned into that with the music which was hilarious that was max i was done before i was there Mm -hmm. but whenever whenever we would um go into casting Mm -hmm. your name would come up oh he's he's around and then i think you did another solo scene with them i did one solo and then i did one threesome scene okay yeah where you weren't wearing i was still wearing those you were yeah okay that was all kind of in the same time frame i think it was like 2018 or 19 okay yeah and then i stopped i stopped completely i was like porn is not for me like fuck this and i think a part of it too i just wasn't fully comfortable with myself and in my body so i just figured i'll just stick to what i know and i'll stick to styling stick to fashion and that was that and then covid hit and everything fucking changed and you went back that's covid was kind of i mean you know i started or restarted doing porn kind of just to see if i could Mm -hmm um also i had nothing else to do no none of us did Mm -hmm. um i figured all right like let me try to start this new project um so it was only fans and modeling and kind of doing everything in front of the camera instead of behind it so let's go back a little bit let's go back to uh little jordan okay where did you grow up i grew up in westchester okay so westchester yeah i'm a uh, 100 percent new yorker what was growing up like did you were you uh, the, all of this were yes. you jordan yes. jameson yes. growing up okay so fascinating mm-hmm. i want to know <laughs> i want to know like how how did it start what was your inspiration oh my god what, it's you know. it's a lot um i don't know i was kind of always like that weird kid in school so i didn't really have a lot of friends growing up um you know i was born in the bronx and then part of my childhood was in the city and then i moved to westchester when i was like 13 so that's really my like growing up coming of age and it's complete you know westchester is just a completely different vibe like for me it's like the republican part of new york so i don't know everyone is very cookie cutter and i just could not fit into any boxes so you know obviously i didn't have any friends but my thing was all right like i'm just gonna like venture off and like build a character so i would skip school in the middle of the day and just go to the city and get into all kinds of trouble and shenanigans like going to sex parties and pretending like i was 25 at 14 yeah very problematic okay Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, this is a more common trend than (laughs) than i realized Mm -hmm. because uh, wait there's other people doing this yes well there were other people i think uh, i was talking to atlas grant at one point he was like oh yeah you know this guy and i hooked up with him and i was under it and i'm like you know these things are fun for you, but it terrible can, it for everyone else involved. But changed. to be fair, like it's not like anybody else knew. Maybe, but yeah, okay. <laughs> to get into and, these clubs, you had to be over eighteen, and I technically was using an ID that was over okay. eighteen. And failure mm-hmm. of the club or failure, whatever. Yeah, whatever. It was happened, no one's fault but my no own. No one got That's hurt. All my, all right. It was all my fault. You, you went in. Yeah. 
consciously. Yes. Okay. All right. Yes. Knowing, and it was also like, all right, I feel like I'm doing something kind of naughty. So yeah. there's that element to it as well. Mm-hmm. So high school, same thing, right? Same vibe. You're going through high school. Yeah. Um, college. Yes. Uh, so I went to art school. Okay. Yeah. I studied fashion, and I don't know. I kind of like found my calling there. Like I found most of my friends who are still my friends to this day. And I don't know, you know, college is like your experimental year. So it was just like going to raves all the time and like obviously doing fucking drugs all the time and really just like living that college lifestyle. Honestly, it was like I was only an associate. So it was like two years of a fucking blur and I learned nothing. <laughs> um, but but can you learn something like fashion? No, I feel like you have I, it. Absolutely not. But um, it was designed. So there's technical okay. things that you can true, learn. True. Yeah. Um, and growing up, I thought that was my calling. And that's what I was going to do was be a designer. Mm-hmm. Um, I love people like McQueen and Rick Owens. So I was like, all right, like I want to be this avant-garde designer and make really cool clothes um, and just make shit that I want to wear. Mm-hmm. Shit did not work out like that. And after college, I started styling instead because it is really fucking hard to make money as a designer. And I did that for a while and I still do it. And it's been almost a decade of styling. Do you still, do you make your clothes? Do you make your no, own clothes? No, I have or? not touched a sewing machine in the longest time. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, literally since like 18. But you put, you put yourself together. Like, yeah, I like to yeah. dress up and shop. You, and yeah. Yeah. Which is really, really cool. Every, I don't think I've seen you in the same outfit every time we got a <laughs> shoot. That's, that's awesome. I oh. mean, life's too short to wear boring outfits. You're right. Mm-hmm. You're right. I wish, um, <laughs> As I sit here in like <laughs> athleisure, and athleisure is fine too. I'm slowly like embracing athleisure myself. Like I'm, I bought more sweatpants. I enjoy I enjoy dressing up. However, it was like 71 degrees today. Yeah. I was lugging all this lo- like uh, like equipment, and I was like, oh my god. Oh I, yeah, yeah. And the funny thing is, while I'm there, I just got out of the shower, and I'm like, what am I going to wear? I was like, no matter what I wear. <laughs> I'm not going to look as good as him. Oh, my God. So I was like, it's fine. I was like, just <laughs> go comfortable. And that's what I did. Mm-hmm. But it is all about you. Let's talk a little bit about, oh, uh, growing up, you identify as gay. Yes. Um, it's kind of shifted a bit. I okay. think now I'm more pansexual. I kind of just like go with the flow and whatever mm-hmm. happened, happens. Um, I was recently in a polyamorous relationship with two bisexual guys. Oh. Yeah. Um, that was two years. And I don't know. They kind of showed me this like whole different world of that's different than just being a gay man. So yeah, my headspace and sexuality is a lot more fluid now. I kind of feel like um, my generation, I'm, I'm 42 now. Mm-hmm. I feel like my generation definitely got screwed when it came to, well, you have to be one or the other. Yeah. I do believe like there's ratios out there Mm -hmm. and I would consider myself an 85% gay or 90% for the most part gay, but Mm -hmm. still I've definitely slept with women. I've, Oh really? Absolutely. (laughs) Yeah. You've gotten in the pussy. Okay. No. Yeah. And it was fun. And there are times that I can see, I can be like, okay, well, yeah, that's kind of hot. Yeah. But for the most part, it's, it's men, Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, I think that, um, Younger guys, younger people in general can flirt more with with so many different things. Mm-hmm. Um, so a polyamorous relationship, huh? Polyamorous relationship. And um, I don't know if I'll do that one again. Um, yeah, definitely like saying. the next time, if ever I am in a relationship, it'll be open for sure. But multiple partners is a lot to navigate for sure. Yeah, that's a lot of... I, f- I feel like partnership in general is dealing a lot with yourself but then also yeah. dealing with another person and mm-hmm. dealing sounds negative more understanding yeah if anything and if you don't understand yourself how are you going to understand other 100%. people but it's it's worth the experience yeah polyamorous and before that it was marriage wait you were married <laughs> i was married what wait yeah okay, come okay. On. you gotta <laughs> i've lived many lifetimes okay over right. 28 years i was gonna lie and say 27 but i'm, gonna, <laughs> I'm 28 um <laughs> what year you're gonna lie <laughs> I'm honestly going to start just saying I'm 28 or 29 for the next 10 years and roll with that shit. Do it. Um, you can do it. You can pass yeah, for it. Yeah. I'm black. I don't crack. <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, so I was actually um, around the time I was filming with Tim. So I was married at that time. Really? And I think that was also part of why I had the disguise because I knew oh. if my husband ever saw this shit, it would be like an instant divorce because he was like against pornography, like against like open sexuality. He even like threatened divorce from me watching porn really yeah, it, it was it was a where'd wild... you find him a christian chat room oh, grinder oh god <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> so yeah. A christian chat room <laughs> yeah literally <laughs> literally yeah. um we got no i just um shacked up with the dude as a way to just get out of the house like at the time i was um 22 
we start we dated for like i don't know a couple months mm-hmm. then he asked me to marry him and i said sure why not and that lasted for two and a half years and wow. it was one of the most toxic but learning experiences of my now life you know yeah yeah um so after marriage um so this is this is putting us in 2019 mm-hmm. what uh 2019 you mentioned the pandemic uh you've been styling since mm-hmm. but then you were introduced again to porn yeah. after your first stint yeah was probably not what you expected and probably not what you wanted um i don't know what i was really expecting i just thought why not okay. let's try it let's see um also part of at that time i was um my body was slowly becoming more and more toned and i was feeling a little bit you know feeling good about myself so i figured all right like i guess this is now's the time if any to get naked in front of a camera but again i think just the putting on a disguise and pretending to be somebody else part was just like yeah this is probably the wrong way to go about it i heard it. it took a long time too so i could only imagine yeah it was, it was a process it was mainly the beard it was it they was like mainly he was the in the beard. bathroom a long time it was, the, was, like, okay. it was the fucking beard because i had to use glue it was getting all over the place right? yeah it was it was wild <laughs> also i was covering up at the time i didn't really have much tattoos i only had like this little guy uh-huh. um and the one on the back of my neck so i was like covering those up and that was another element of the whole thing so getting getting toned and being in front of the camera what does it feel like to get naked in front of the camera I mean, now it's whatever. Like, yeah. I don't even think about it. Well, what about the first time? What about the, the first, first time, time I was nervous, a hundred percent nervous. And, you know, I never really modeled at all at that time. I think I've modeled maybe once or twice fashion wise before that, you know, being a stylist, you work with so many photographers. I'd show up on set in a crazy outfit and the photographer would be like, Oh, like, let me shoot you. And yeah, I know. They push the yeah. person out of the way. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I did like a couple editorial things as a, like during my styling career way before porn, but mm-hmm never fully considered myself a model but then doing porn i was like maybe this could be my gateway into restarting all this but again it just wasn't the right time and i wasn't in the right place what studios have you worked for since you've started a plethora of studios yeah Yeah. i've seen you in a good amount of places yes (laughs) (laughs) which is good and and you do you do big studios and you do the smaller studios Mm -hmm. which is cool yeah what vibe or what which one do you prefer more? I mean, honestly, anybody that gives me a fucking check. Okay. <laughs> no, right. besides that, yeah. no. I honestly just like working with people that are kind and cool. Okay. And luckily, for the most part, I've worked with really decent, cool humans in the porn industry. What about, because um, I did an interview with uh, with Davey, mm-hmm. uh, and I saw your interview with him. <laughs> that was really, really cool. Yeah. How was that experience? Because I've heard it's all, I've heard nothing but good things. Davey is super experience. sweet. Yeah. He is amazing. And I don't know, like all the scenarios, everything that he creates is really, really great. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's uh, a positive, like, set. Super like, positive. It, it's like going away to camp or something like yeah, that. Yeah, right? it it's really was. It was. Retreat. And, you know, I knew most of the people there mm-hmm. that were that I was filming with. So it was literally like being in camp with my friends. You know, we were just like key king and like, you know, acting as if we weren't in a work environment at all the entire time. I feel like that's great. Mm-hmm. I feel like if I feel like if uh, if if I could work at a studio and do that for models. Yeah. That would be amazing. Yeah. Like, you know, like, you and can, you can, you, can get you so totally much. can. I know. I know. I gotta, I'm kind of with, I'm kind of with on. someone right now. <laughs> <laughs> Feel that. Feel that. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about some of the fashion that you've done that comes out of porn because you first of all your instagram following is huge right? i mean not comparatively to some of these other guys like yeah i know boys out here with like 200k yeah i know but instagram's harder than twitter very true opinion. this is very very true and, and if you get deleted on instagram I, it's literally a bitch. that's like my worst nightmare i have yeah, anxiety sorry, knock attacks on, knock on wood, wood this is hammering down here, yeah right? <laughs> but no i have like anxiety attacks like every night yeah. about possibly losing my gram so like i've become a lot more like pg pg 13 the past couple of years because you know when i first started doing only fans and then restarted doing porn i was like fuck it i was like posting all these nudes and selfies and all types of shit on my instagram and it was like ban warning after another one for like months so i was like yeah like i gotta <laughs> reel it in do you ever get studios i assume not because you show up they they kind of they see your pictures and stuff they know what they're gonna get yeah do you ever get studios that are or people that are like oh, well, we don't, we're not, you know, we're not vibing with you or something. I mean, no one's ever told me that, but, you know, I've been told like, hey, like, you're a lot. Your look is a lot and you are very specific. And I can't change that. And the thing is, I learned this from 
the minotaur costume is that i can put on so many different costumes but what the fu- what the fuck is the point i might as well just be myself mm-hmm. and whoever likes it will mesh with that and they do you change from minotaur to jordan jameson which yeah. I have to say is a nicer name and, or it's a, it's a, honestly, there's parts of me that kind of wishes I stuck with Minotaur. Minotaur is great, but I feel like at least it's not a Twitter name. You know how yeah. some people are like, Oh, well my, my porn name is at, you know, big dick 2101. <laughs> and you're like, well, I can't put that on a yeah. DVD cover or a, a page, a yeah. website page, or, you know, it's, it's just hard to describe. Um, Minotaur was at least creative. And yeah. I feel like that came from you. Mm-hmm. But then when you change it to Jordan Jameson, it's, it's, it plays, it plays in Peoria, as they would say, you know, like uh-huh. it, it plays in everywhere. Yeah. What inspired the change? Um, honestly, the big part of that was my manager. Yeah. You know, he told me like, listen, you need like a more professional first and last name. And I just spitballed that one. It was like the first name of one of my favorite male models and the last name of Jenna Jameson. Oh, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. So not quite your first street address and your pet's name, but <laughs> yeah. Your your what is it? Your street the street you lived on and Something your, like your that. first pet. Yeah. Wolf Jackson. That would have been funny me. enough though, my first pet was Jordan, so it might have still been Jordan regardless. Okay. Yeah. What about the street? Sycamore. Jordan Sycamore. That's not a bad one. Not bad. Yeah. It's not terrible. Sometimes you get lucky. Mm-hmm. What is your relationship with porn like now? Um, <laughs> like being in the industry, what do you, let's talk a little mental health. Okay. okay? Cause I know that a lot of times, um, we'll speak to models now and some of them are not available, not yeah. because they're not mentally there. Yes. Yeah. Basically. And that's good. I meet so many guys that are addicted or was addicted or struggling with drug addiction mm-hmm. or whatever kind of addiction. Um, yeah, it's sad to see. It really is. Luckily, I stay fairly zen. I don't know. Like, I my drug is just meditation and working out, honestly. Like, I try to just, like, stay in the moment, stay within reality for the most part, mm-hmm. and enjoy it. Um, whenever I'm performing, I do this weird thing where I'm like, it sounds crazy, but I pretend like I'm an animal, and I just, like, kind of go to my, like, most primal, feral form, if that makes any kind of sense. And, no, it does. Yeah. Because try- it is. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't try to get out of the moment of, oh, there's cameras around and we're filming a scene. So two questions or a two parter Mm -hmm. Um, that goes along with what we were just talking about. Yeah. You're are you in a relationship now? I am currently single. Okay. Yeah. So what I find is a lot of times if you are single, your relationship with porn as being in front of the camera is a little different Mm -hmm. because that's your sex life almost. Hmm. Is it your sex life? No, no, it is not. I enjoy having sex all the time. Okay. Yes. Um, I don't know. Outside of doing porn, I just enjoy really great. <laughs> so you have a healthy sex relationship, a fairly that's, healthy sex okay. relationship. That's separated yeah. from, from porn. Mm-hmm. That's good because that's, that's not an easy thing to do. <laughs> yeah. I but my fa- thoughts yeah. on porn in general, outside mm-hmm. of all of that, honestly, like I do love the industry and I love, the performers in it, the people behind the scenes that were creating something for people to consume. I do have my issues, my stipulations and specifically with gay porn. I feel like sometimes we get into this like heteronormative box and it's like, all right, we have to be as straight as possible. Mm -hmm. Pretend like we're straight, pretend like, and normalize things. And it's like, why we're already gay. Why not push the queer envelope? Well, one of the things I've come across recently is and there'll probably be a comment or two about it. Yeah. But the minute you say that you've been with a girl or something, oh, well, he's a fake gay or he's yeah, an ex gay, which I have 100%. no idea yeah. what an ex gay is. <laughs> the only time I ever hear ex gay is when it's somebody that just went through conversion. But I, now I hear gay men calling other men ex gay because they've had sex with uh, like women mm. or they're bisexual or I've never known gay people to be so exclusive. Yeah. Until recently. <laughs> It's a weird click. Yeah. It's a very weird click. Have you ever had an issue where you've walked on set and you're like, I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not attracted to the person in front of me? Or it's not even, sometimes it's not even the attraction of the person. It's the energy. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> hilariously. Yes. Um, and the funny thing is it's usually, it has nothing to do with attraction. Like 
I've seen some really hot guys in front of me. And it's, yeah, as you said, it's really just the energy. And it's like, all right, like you, we are not vibing. And it's moments like that. You just have to like put your big boy pants on and literally just suck it the fuck up. And you do get it, in the headspace and make it work. So you're working in porn. You're also styling. Mm-hmm. What else does Jordan Jameson want to do? I don't know. President of the United States. Okay. That's on the eventual <laughs> list. But no, um, I honestly would like to direct at some point. Okay. I have a lot of fun, creative ideas. I can see yeah. I can see you trans um like translating to behind the scenes very well. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so oh, that's right. You're a writer too, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so what what kind of stuff do you write? Um I write a little of everything. So personal stories, like um, my sexual shenanigans, op eds, just personal opinions, a little of everything. Are and they're published? Are you doing yes. um, okay. so I had did a piece recently with Sniffies. Okay. Yeah, that came out for Valentine's Day. And then I've done something with Squirt, mm-hmm. Gaydar, and my ex boyfriend, he has this really awesome blog boy slut, and I have a couple of fun stories over there. That's where people would go if they want to find Yes. Okay. Yeah. So activism. Yeah. Let's just talk a little, a little bit. bit about your just your... honestly like trying to make the world more sex positive. And there's so many people doing it, mm-hmm. which is great, and we just need to fucking do that shit more and show that it's okay to be a fucking slut <laughs> i love it so you're taking back the word slut yeah eh, nothing wrong with it nothing wrong with it's it. a fun word too mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um so when people want to find you and people want to know and people want to watch jordan jameson where do they go google my name and you'll find a lot of free porn <laughs> but also <laughs> yeah. don't say that don't say, i should not say that <laughs> no <laughs> My Twitter is um, at Jordan is spooky. This is my fourth Twitter. Oh, geez, um, yeah. Yeah. I have the worst luck on Twitter. <laughs> of and, all um, places. Of all fucking, <laughs> hilariously. And I got taken down the first time off my banner picture that. Oh, right. Yeah. That's right. That yeah. was the biggie. Yeah. So for all of you out there, be fucking PG rated G on your banner pic. Um, yes. At Jordan is spooky on Twitter. At Jonesu, J O N Z U, on Instagram. OnlyFans is at Jordan Jameson XXX. Sweet. Oh, shit. And I have Just for Fans. Wow. And <laughs> Just for Fans, Jordan is spooky. I have to thank you so much. I absolutely appreciate you sitting down with me. Of course. Um, and like I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to be driving home and I'll be like, fuck, why didn't I ask this question? And I put it out to my Patreon guys. Like, is there anything that you guys want to know? Mm-hmm. Um, I didn't check my fucking Patreon. <laughs> so. I'm sure if something comes up, I will let you know. Okay. And come season five, you know, yeah. let's, let's rumble. Again. Hell yeah. All right. Thank you. Yay, I thank absolutely you appreciate me. it. You've been watching Demystifying Gay Porn. I am your host, Ike Grande. Demystifying Gay Porn can be found on every podcast directory, as well as YouTube. Demystifying Gay Porn is on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Telegram, Discord, And if you like what you're watching and want to be a part of the process, head over to patreon.com backslash demystifying gay porn, where you can help support this channel and I can continue making content like this. Once again, this is demystifying gay porn. My name is Ike Grande. And if you watch gay porn, I've definitely helped to get off. Cheers.